to discuss this more. Jamie and I are joined by Alpesh Patel, founder of Profinium Partners. Good to have you with us. Thank Alpesh. you. Um, let's begin with this warning. Now, you know, I think what most people are going to be thinking is who, why does the United States think it has the right to kind of say, oi, be careful, Britain, about your relationship with the EU? I can't imagine that David Cameron is going to take too kindly to this, dis dis regardless of the so-called special relationship. I'm at number 10 later today. I'll ask him if, if, he's, if he's hanging around there at the time. But actually, what is extraordinary about this? You're absolutely right. The American government is taking the unusual step of briefing British journalists on UK policy relating to the EU. But the fact that the Americans are completely misunderstood why this referendum issue has come up in British politics. It, it's not because the, e, uh, the UK has any intention in terms, of, uh, uh, in terms of votes of ever leaving the EU. The votes just aren't there. It, it's actually an election strategy because it means that the leakage that the Conservative Party is seeing to UKIP the UK Independence Party can to some extent be blocked by saying, well, look, we've got a referendum coming up on this issue. You don't need to vote for UKIP because we in the Conservative Party are going to give it to you anyway. That's what's going on. It's domestic politics. But the Americans, I think, have completely overreacted but and mis misread it. Why do the US care? Well, they see Britain as, of course, their special relations, their special relationship with the United Kingdom, and they want uh, the Britain to have a strong voice within the EU, as opposed to being part of it, because they want to deal Is with it everything. Their Trojan horse, as it were, in the Europe, you think? I wonder if it's that or whether it's just the fact that they see a strong Europe, and it's been the policy of America since the Second World War, to have a strong, stable, unified Europe. Uh, it's in their economic interests, for sure. Uh, but it, the fact that they've taking this extraordinary step suggests that somebody has misunderstood, mm. not, not for the first time, somebody in America has misunderstood foreign politics. Let's talk about um, Ireland and the bank debt deal. They had, a, they had a, a debt issue yesterday. It was actually quite successful. They managed to sell um, some debt in the market. Is Ireland coming through, do you think? It's a positive story in that they managed to, the Irish government managed to sell about a billion euros worth of debt. In other words, they got in money of about mm. a billion euros. Now, remember, they've still got 64 billion euro of bank debt, which has been publicly funded and being helped by the EU because the Irish government cannot service that debt alone. So it's a reminder early into the new year, after all the talk about the fiscal cliff, that we're not away from these debt problems by a long shot. And despite the fact that the uh, equity markets this year around the world are up about 2 to 3% already, mm. where we might think, mm. wow, isn't that amazing? We're, we're, we're past it all, new year, new hope. Well, there's still a lot of debt problems. Still, though, Barroso and Van Rompuy seem to be very optimistic, saying, you know, putting their support to one, because there is the thought that perhaps it can escape the bailout package now. Yeah, well, they better hope so, because they've got Spain, Greece, Portugal, know, and Italy to worry know, about. I'm they trying don't, to they see don't the need positive Italy. in a oh, new well, absolutely. year, It's good news, it's good news. It's good news that uh, uh, it, it's not a Greece, it's not a Spain, it's not a Portugal. No, I'm not being pessimistic at all. Uh, and actually, they've said, the Irish people have been immensely resilient in that you haven't seen the protests in the streets of the scale you've seen elsewhere. The other interesting thing is, that, is they did rather grab the bull by the horns right at the beginning, didn't they? He said, mm. right, take the debt, put it on the public balance sheet, and that's yeah. it, and we're going to deal with it. They didn't sort of muck around. I mean, there was a certain sense of decisiveness, even if you felt perhaps it was the wrong thing to do. Yeah. But there was a sense of decisiveness about it, which I think the markets definitely like. I think there's a sense that with Ireland, it has been very well handled. Mm. With Greece, there were other reasons why it couldn't be handled in the same way, not least because there was the issue, uh, there was almost a nationalist issue about Germany and Greece and, and this notion that there were German financiers telling the Greeks and, and of course the political cultures are very different in the two countries as, as well. So it has been actually far better handled than the, than the crisis in any of the other states. Well, talking about political clashes, let's move on to what the Gulf News is following now. Um, uh, India lodging this protest over clashes. This is... Um, Two Indian soldiers have been killed. Um, there's been, a, obviously, a skirmish um, over, a, a, along this line of control. That's continued. But you made the point earlier when we were talking before we came on air that it's unlikely that this is um, going to take over the headlines of what's really going on in India and the focus over this horrific um, alleged gang rape of yeah. a 23-year-old girl yeah. in Delhi. Yeah. The Indian government is very distracted at the moment with the mass 
protests, not just in Delhi, but throughout uh, the major cities of India. And that's, n that's a story which is not going to go away. The, the one thing when you're a government in trouble, as all governments around the world know, is some kind of war story to try and get people behind the nation. I don't think this is actually going to help. Uh, unusually, normally, the, 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 uh, an issue regarding Kashmir, and particularly anything regarding India and Pakistan, two nuclear powers, most dangerous place in the world, uh, normally that would start getting uh, the Indian population behind uh, the government as the reaction of most, most countries uh, and their people when, when they feel that there's a national threat. I don't think that'll happen in You're this case. You're not saying they're sort of manipulating the story in order to be able to try and... Uh, uh, I think given the, the, given, the, well. the, given the allegations in the press and amongst a lot of the people of the incompetence of the Indian government, I think I'd be very impressed if they were able to actually uh, orchestrate uh, something like this uh, to, uh, to try and get some kind of distraction from just how much trouble they're in. And, and how much trouble they're in is, is right across the headlines, across mm -hmm. all the Indian newspapers. Uh, it's a government on its last legs. And, and I think the, the rape case has just shown how, how out of control they are. They don't have control over law and order, let alone, uh, by the looks of it, national security either. Is Boeing in trouble? regarding these glitches, mm. should I say, or mishaps, as well, um, the New York Times three in a row said. is not yeah. good. But you can remember with the Eurobus, um, the, the um, Airbus. Airbus, rather, the, the, when it was launched, it had bits falling off uh, as, it was, as it was flying around the world. As you'd expect it, from it, a multi-million pound <laughs> plane, from, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and, and thankfully, no lives lost. So I think... Uh, it's right to say that uh, new products always have a few glitches, even yeah. if it's worrying when it's an aeroplane. Uh, but I was looking at their share price. I was showing you earlier that the share price over the last five years, it's, it's, at, a, it's at a high, five-year high as of yesterday, pretty much. And over the last 15 years, it's gone up fourfold. They're, this is their iPhone strategy. They've put all their money into this product. And I think it's going to come through for them, uh, not least because global demand, global growth, uh, particularly obviously as we know from the East, suggests that it's, it's going to be much in demand uh, as a product. Um, uh, another, another product, um, the... Uh, Talking of iPhone strategy. <laughs> yeah, no, the iPhone, iPhone strategy, the iPhone. Smaller and cheaper one. It's interesting is because Apple's never really worried much about sort of price competition, has it? It's rather sort of said, yeah. this is what we've got, this is what we do, yeah, yeah. take it or leave it. Yeah, and we've seen that in actual fact, the amount of competition they've got from Samsung, who had their results this, this, uh, this week and, and had uh, uh, record profits, that they clearly do now need to worry about getting into new markets because that cash flow growth that they've been getting year on year, which has been very impressive with Apple, and I think in actual fact, I declare an interest, I'm a shareholder in Apple, I think their share price will probably double over the next couple of years, but the best hedge is actually to own, if you're into investing is have Samsung and Apple shares because they're the two market leaders in this space and it's one or the other is yes. going to pretty much by the looks of it but the market, the market is so extra the market is so extraordinary it could be somebody you've barely heard of in a couple of years could be up there you're right sorry, with knows? technology in three or four years exactly what could happen but the way it looks at the moment these mm. two are, are, are streams ahead of anybody else someone we have we don't know yet but hopefully if all goes yeah. well we will um, know of soon is the daughter of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, which is due she, later this year. Yep. Or, well, be... not necessarily a daughter, my goodness. But if it is? We don't know if it's a boy or a girl. She, well, everybody's daughter's their little princess, including my, exactly. my, my lovely nieces are, are princesses. Yeah. So I don't think it's a story. Uh, but at least, you know, we, we, we said that we started off with what was with Ireland a good news story. I think this is definitely a good news story uh, continuing. And I think it's going to continue holding the headlines. And it's great for Britain as well, because it'll mean after last year being an Olympic year, this year, People are in love with um, the Dutch like Cambridge and all Olympics these stories. Or again, it is. It? <laughs> We're on baby watch. And just to make clear, we do not know if it's a boy or a girl. It's only if it's not a girl. Breaking it, will be news. Called, it will be called a princess. No. <laughs> Alpesh, thanks very much Thank for joining. You. It's always a pleasure. Jamie and I shall see you very, very soon.